Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So, do you know that in 2025, less than 10% of the code that you deploy is actually written by you? Most of the time. So, somebody who follows me sent me an output from a Grok analysis of software development today. And uh, I looked into it more closely. Grok was not hallucinating. So, bottom line is, there is this panic and fear that coding is going away being replaced by AI. This is true. There's going to be less code to be written by software developers because of AI. But guess what? This has been a trend that's been going on for a long, long time. So I spent a few hours drawing out this highly detailed diagram that represents it all. So here we go. I'm sure it's going to focus because this is a good old Sony camera. So you see this chart here? At the bottom here, you got years. And on the side here, you got, is that the side? Yeah. On the side here, you got pre-written code deployed. Pre-written code deployed, year. So 1995, 2000, 210, 225, et cetera. So you see that? So you notice the slope, it goes up like this. It goes whoop. So meaning over time, since I've been coding since then, 95, I've seen more and more pre written code, pre-written code is being deployed by developers. So back in 1995, most of the code we, I would argue that most of the apps we deployed was a lot more code written by us. Far greater than 10% of the code that was deployed was written by us. I don't know, if maybe it was 35%, maybe it was 40%, uh, it was probably like 35%. How could that be, Steph? How could that be, you say? When you are using JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, C Sharp, Java, you're using a lot of pre-written code. Big parts of Java are written in uh, C++ or C. I forget now, it's either one or the other. Uh, of course, a lot of it's also written in Java. Basically, when you're using people's library, using React, using a lot of code written by other people. So you're writing your React applications using the React library your code represents a small fraction of the actual code that's deployed, right? Because you're deploying the React library, and there's a heck of a lot of code in there. When you're building a database-driven app, you're building a web app, and you have a database behind the scenes, whether it be Postgre or MySQL, you're using all this code, the, the database code, to take that uh, you're deploying all that, right? If you know what I mean. But that's kind of a, more of a step, it's a step outside. We'll stick to libraries. You're using Vue, React, Bootstrap. You're deploying an app. You, you, I don't know, you put out a custom WordPress application. You write a big custom theme that's very complex, but you're using all, you're, when you upload all that stuff with WordPress, you're, you're uploading a lot of other people's code. So don't think that this uh, diminishment of deployed code by the actual developers is some new trend because of AI. In fact, this has been going on for years and years and years. I remember back in uh, the 90s when, well, it was 95, 96, I think it was 96 when Java was first released and then 2000 C Sharp was first released. I remember especially in 95 when C++ programmers I knew, they were incredulous, if that's the right word, they didn't like the languages like Java and JavaScript, they thought it was kind of cheating because with C++, you got to manage all the memory yourself. So with that memory management, it gives you tremendous control. That's one of the reasons why C++ code writes, it runs so fast. But with Java and JavaScript and Python and TypeScript, and you don't manage the memory. C Sharp, that's all taken care of by the, uh, by the languages themselves whether it's at runtime or compile. So the C++ programmers I knew were pissed off about that. They said, that's not real programming, dude. It's not efficient. But the software development industry, the community decided that memory management was such a burden. It was like the primary source of bugs that they said, it's better we take that away, let the system handle that so we can concentrate on core functionality of the application. So I see AI, libraries like React, now AI, as the next level of this, where 
a lot of the boilerplate, the plumbing code, if you will, a lot of the, the, the underlying crappy work, I'll call it, is now being uh, taken away from us or we're, we're, we're not having to deal with that burden anymore. And so we can get right to building applications. So yeah, right now, in 2025, uh, based on what the AI have pulled out, about 10% of the code that's being deployed is actually the code written by the, de by the uh, developers who are deploying the code. Again, if you're deploying a React app, there's probably a lot more React code in the React library than the code that you wrote to work with the React library. So it's, you know, people are having kittens over nothing. Again, to go back to my highly detailed and amazing drawing here, look at that slope of deployed code over time that, um, that's pre-written. So anyway, instead of using a library, now we're just using AI, which is doing pretty much the same thing anyway behind the scenes. So there you go, that's the story. Let me end off by saying that uh, I've been at this game for so long. I've seen this happen over and over again. What we had to do in the mid and late 1990s in terms of the amount of code we had to write, you don't have to do it anymore. And as such, web apps, and applications are far more sophisticated. They're far better. Uh, we're going to see now with AI, which augments that again, it's another leap up. So what we're going to see is we're going to see better code, although if you write Vibe code, it's going to be crap code. But if you know how to use the AIs properly, you can end up with better applications, more robust applications. The turnaround time is going to be far quicker. As I mentioned, I was speaking to a startup out of, out of uh, Southeast Asia, and they said they were able to do an app, a mobile app, in about two months, which without AI's help, it would have taken them about, about a year to do. So you're going to see far faster iterations. So code will get better and better and better and better and better. Uh, software will get better and better and better and better because the iterations are much more quickly, are much more quick. And I think we're going to also, not I think, I'm already seeing it, we're going to see certain things, certain processes in our lives sped up quite a bit. So I think overall there's going to be improvement. What do I mean by that? There were a lot of issues with business processes, government processes that are just so painfully inefficient. So part of that is because of bureaucracies and bureaucracies like keeping things the same because that's how they make their money. So with AI, we could force um, the uh, cleanup of processes to speed things up. There's no, there's no reason why it could take it should take days to get your passport renewed. If you are, you know, if you're born in a country or you're you're a citizen of a country. You've gotten a passport. You got. You should be able to go. Beep, get just get a new one like this, right? It's not like you change citizenships, right? Uh, same thing with driver's license. It should and, and so many other things. Doing your taxes. Doing your taxes should be instant. It shouldn't take all the kinds of accounting work and all. It should be instant. So there's so much wasted time in our day to day lives. It drives me bananas personally. So I'm hoping. Why well, I know with AI, we're going to see an, an improvement there. The more we can cut cost, the more we can um, speed up our day-to-day -day lives, the better everybody's lives are going to be. So we can concentrate on bigger things, more important things. So I took over. I live in this a bit, fairly big building downtown Montreal, and I'm an owner in one of the units. So I was uh, pushed into joining the board. So we, I run the building. And I have to tell you, there's so much inefficiency. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable amount of inefficiency. So we caught in, we got in here, and uh, two of us were basically, you know, we're running a show here. We got a business background. Entrepreneurial business backgrounds, very different from corporate. Anyhow, so we started implementing all these efficiencies. 
and not AI or anything, but just, just, just you know. And we've already cut our costs down by like 25%. But there's a lot of resistance, right? So I think we're going to see this uh, refinement of processes that AI will enable and give us the excuse, frankly. Because, uh, and then if we can do that, become more efficient in our day-to-day, -day, then things will be much better. Life will be much better. We saw it. That's what the Industrial Revolution did, right? Allow for the quick production, easy production. You know, I remember when my grandparents, 8,000 years ago, you know, they would sew their socks. <laughs> and they would sew their pants. Because getting new socks and new shirts and pants was very expensive. So they would sew. Now it's so cheap because of industrialization, technology, process management. It's actually better to not, in many respects. Uh, you can actually uh, l burn less energy by just producing something new. But that's another story. Anyway, AI is going to do that. AI presents huge opportunities. Right now, again, uh, an estimate is right now 10% of, of the code that you're deploying is actually written by you. Most of the code is already pre-written. So AI is going to take it down even further. And this is nothing new. As I said, from 1995, look at this curve, right? Look at the slope. Less and less of the deploy code is uh, written by the, the, the deployer of the code, right? A lot of it is pre-written code. So it ain't nothing new, boys. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. I teach people in the ways of software development. I hope this video was useful to you. If you disagree with any of my comments, please write them below. Bonus, get yourself in shape. Cut down your carbs. Try to cut them down by half to 90%, even more, even more. And do daily exercises, micro exercises, drink a lot of water, sleep well. You're going to see your cognitive capacity will shoot up. You'll look much better. Guys, you want to hit 15% body fat, you're going to look amazing, amazing. Anyway, how do you get there? The trick is not in the diet. The trick is not in the exercise. The trick is reprogramming your lizard brain so that you're habitually inclined to do healthy things like micro exercises, like eat proper food, etc. But that's another story. Cheers.